Okay, so let's get started. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about hyperbolic trig functions, which sounds fairly intimidating, but we're going to find it's not actually too bad. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving the definition of what they are and some cool properties relating to them, so that if you were to ever see trig functions, you hopefully won't be too scared. But we won't be talking about them in too much detail. So we're going to start off our discussion by going back to Euler's formula, e to the ix is equal to cosine x plus i sine x, and we know that we can rewrite our trig functions in terms of our complex exponentials, so we can say that cosine of x is equal to e time raised to the ix plus e to the negative ix all over 2, in that sine of x is equal to e to the ix minus e to the negative ix all over 2i. Now, we're going to be considering the case of what happens when x is purely imaginary. So we're just going to write what happens when x is equal to i times y, or y is just some variable. Well, we can substitute it in and try and see what we get. Uh, and we're going to get that cosine of y is equal to e raised to the i times i times y, which is just negative y, plus e raised to the negative 1 times i times i times y, which is just y, all over 2. Now, it's important to keep in mind that these are no longer complex exponentials. These are now real exponentials. Uh, likewise, with sine of iy, we get that that's equal to e to the negative y minus e to the y all over 2i. And what we're going to actually do is we're going to factor out a negative 1 from the numerator and say that this is equal to negative 1 times e to the y minus e to the negative y all over 2 times i. And we can say that i squared is negative 1 and we can cancel out an i in the numerator and the, the denominator to get that all of this is equal to i times e to the y minus e to the negative y all over 2. So now we have like two fractions involving the sum of two real exponents, or real exponentials. And these uh, like terms apparently come up so often that mathematicians decide to give them their own proper name. So we're going to define the fraction e to the y plus e to the negative y over 2. This is hyperbolic cosine. In the way we say it in shorthand is we just say cosh of h. So cosh of y, cosh of y. And we're going to define e to the y minus e to the negative y all over 2 as the hyperbolic sine, which we're just going to say as cinch of y. So that means that this term right here is our cosh of y, and this term right here is our cinch of y which means, whoops, this should have been iy, my bad, which means that cosine of i times y is just equal to cosh of y, in that sine of i times y is just equal to i times cinch of y. So here's our definitions of our hyperbolic trig functions, and here's more or less in the context in which we saw them. Now, we can actually plot these trig functions out, and it's important to realize that they're, since they're hyperbolic trig functions, they don't actually look anything like sine or cosine. In fact, uh, we can pull up our graphing program. Here's hyperbolic sine. And right here we can have hyperbolic cosine. And notice it's not actually restricted to the case of, like, uh, to the range of, like, 1 to negative 1, and it doesn't oscillate or anything. 
And that's because it is the sum of two exponential. Now we can talk about some like interesting properties involving hyperbolic sine and cosine, like we can talk about the derivatives of them. So if we wanted to take the derivative of cos uh, y, that would just be the derivative of e to the y plus e to the negative y over 2, which is just derivative of e to the y is just e to the y. Derivative of e to the negative y, that's just minus e to the negative y all over 2. And this itself is just sinh of y. So we can say that the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is the hyperbolic sine. Likewise, we can take the derivative of hyperbolic sine, and this is going to be equal to the derivative of e to the y minus e to the negative y over 2, which is just going to be e to the y plus e to the negative y over 2, which is just our hyperbolic cosine, or cosh of y. So the derivative of sinh of y is cosh of y. Now, while we're at it, we can talk about two other cool properties with hyperbolic trig functions. Um, using this definition here, if we add cosh of y and sinh of y together, like we're just left with e to the y. And you can do this out with algebra, but if we, if we have hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared, that's just equal to one. Kind of analogous to the idea that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to one. So it's an interesting, like, bridge between our real exponentials and kind of like a mimic of our uh, sinusoids. But one last thing, the very last thing we're going to talk about in relation to that is the series expansions of sinh and cosh. The series expansion of hyperbolic sine, that's just, if we expand about the point x is equal to zero, that's just equal to, whoops, uh, y plus y cubed over 3 factorial plus y to the fifth over 5 factorial and so on. And we can rewrite it, this in series notation as just n going from 0 to infinity of y to the 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 factorial. So this is fairly similar to the series expansion for our sine y. The only difference is we don't have, like, that alternating minus sign. And because of it, our hyperbolic sign goes off to infinity. and doesn't actually, uh, as, like, y, as y goes to infinity. It doesn't actually, like, oscillate back and forth. Likewise, uh, the series expansion for hyperbolic cosine is equal to 1 plus y squared over 2 factorial plus y to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on which we can rewrite as just the series sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of y raised to the 2n over 2n factorial. Again, a lot like the uh, series expansion for cosine the only difference is we don't have that alternating minus sign. So there we go. Uh, we found a bunch of prop. Well, we defined our hyperbolic sine and cosine, and just found a bunch of properties relating to them. Um, it's important to realize that uh, although I did sinh and cosh of y, it holds true more or less for any variable. Uh, it's not like a strictly y thing. And yeah, I hopefully that gives you enough information, like, 
and for enough familiar, familiar, uh, familiarity with hyperbolic trig functions.